The Gemara Chazal tell us a f- famous principle of Kol Yisrael Arevim Zelazeh. All Jews are responsible for one another. And in fact, it's not just a nice drasha, a nice sermon, but a halachic principle. As we used to let's say, for example, every Friday night, that even though I fulfill my mitzvah of Kiddush, if there's another Jew who hasn't heard Kiddush, then I'm allowed to make Kiddush even a hundred times in order to ensure that every Jew fulfills the mitzvah of Kiddush, or if it exists by chauffeur. If there's only one person who knows how to blow chauffeur in shawl, and, and there are three shawls in town, there's only one person who knows how to blow chauffeur in the town, so you could go to each of the different shawls even make brachas again and blow another hundred chauffeur blasts. It's kol yisrael arevim zelazeh. So the question is, how far does that go? My obligation to someone else, my obligation to another Jew, how far is one obligated to go? So clearly if I could help someone do a mitzvah, I am obligated. And I'm obviously part of the mitzvah of Tochacha or Kaisa Rama says to ensure that other Jews don't sin as well. So how far do I have to go? So as the Gemara says in Shabbos, the Chi Omrim or Adam Khata Vishriya Shiz Kachavercha, do we say what about should I sin myself in order to save you from a sin? So of course of course what it means is should I violate a lesser sin, me personally to prevent you from violating a bigger sin. Obviously, to me, doing a bigger sin, to prevent you from doing a lesser sin, wouldn't make any sense. But logically, if someone's, if I don't do anything, they're going to violate a biblical prohibition. But I could, if I do, but by doing something, I could stop them from the biblical prohibition. However, I'm going to violate a rabbinical prohibition. So actually, the, so um, the Gemara in Shabbos on Daf Dalad Amin Aleph talks about it in the context of baking. So just a little background information. There are 39 prohibited activities on Shabbos, and one of them is Ulta, one of them is baking. And if, you've, and if you bake on Shabbos, you violate one of the, a biblical prohibition, one of the 39 malachas. And during the time of the Gemara, there's a concept called Ridiyas Hapas. Basically, the process was that when you used to bake bread, they used to attach the dough to the walls of the oven. And, the, and then you, you'd have to remove the bread from the walls of the oven after you baked it. And that would involve a rabbinical prohibition of of Sabbath. Whatever the exact details are, it's basically if you cook something, you bake something on Shabbos, you violate a biblical prohibition. And part of the baking process during the time of the Gemara was it involved, the, if you, by taking, doing redeed, surprise, taking the bread of the oven, it involved the rabbinical prohibition. That's the second fact. And the third fact is, if I put dough into an oven on Shabbos, I'm not chayev for, oh, for, for, for baking until the bread is, the bread is baked. In other words, if I put the bread in the oven and I cook it, and, I mean, it bakes, and then I violate an Issa de Raisa. However, if I remove the bread from the oven, so then, so then um, the Gemara says I'm exempt from an Onish. So the Gemara wants to know, let's say one place dough in an oven on Shabbos, the Gemara says, it's mutter to take the bread out of the oven before it bakes. Because better, the Gemara says, if you put if you put bread in the oven, and now it's in the oven, so if you don't do anything now, you're going to violate a biblical prohibition of ofa, of cooking, afia. However, by taking it out now before it's baked, you'd only violate a rabbinical prohibition of redia tapas. So the Gemara says one is permitted to do it. So we see... Obviously, which makes sense, you're permitted to violate... Obviously, it's better not to violate any Avera, but if, the, if you're going to violate an Avera, the question is, should it, is it to violate a, 
stricter of era or a lighter of era, of course you go with the lighter of era. In the case here, better to violate Redia Sapas, taking the bread out of the oven before it's baked, versus the biblical prohibition of baking. However, the Gemara says, that's only if you put the bread in the oven and you take it out. What happens if your friend or your enemy or someone else put the bread in the oven? And now you have the ability to take the bread out of the oven. But it doesn't save your friend from a biblical prohibition. The mitzvah of Kaizal, we want to stop our Jews from sinning. The problem is, by doing that, I'm going to violate an Isid Rabbanon. I'm going to violate a smaller sin to save my friend from a major sin. So the Gemara says, Ain't Omrim. You don't say, you can't say to someone sin that you should sin in order to save your friend from sinning. So the Gemara says, that is the principle, that's how far Kali Yisrael Rebbe Zawazel goes. You're not responsible. You should do everything possible to stop your friend, you know, within reason from doing an Avera. But you don't have to commit a minor sin yourself to violate a major sin. And that gets into, I'm not going to get into that. The many issues that come up in Kira Rechokim that, you, you know, that could be challenging issues. We could, you know, we could discuss it another time. It's separate. Maybe we'll get into a, the other a topic of um, giving food to someone who's not going to make a bracha or inviting non-observant Jews to your house on Shabbos. And we'll touch on these issues. But that will be another class. So that's what the Gemara says. You're not allowed to sin now, or even a minor sin, to prevent yourself from doing a major sin. That's the Gemara. So, um, however... The Rishonim, the earlier commentators, give different exceptions to the rule, like many rules. There are exceptions. The rule is, Ein Adam, Ein wa Omer wa Adam. We don't tell somebody you should sin in order to save someone else from sinning. Uh, we, a person shouldn't even sin a minor sin to prevent them from a major sin. However, Tosis quotes a couple of exceptions to the rule, another Rishonim. One is, not all mitzvahs are equal. There's a concept of a mitzvah the rabbim. There are mitzvahs for individuals and there are mitzvahs for the rabbim. So there's a famous Gemara in Brachas, Mem Zayin when Rabbi Elezer, he walked into Shul and there were only nine people, nine men, and he had an Evid Kanani with him uh, and he was Meshachar, he freed his Ebed Kanani, because the status of an Ebed Kanani is that he's a quasi-Jew. So, all, so by freeing the Ebed, discussion going to mikvah, what he has to do, he becomes a full-fledged Jew. So Rabbi Eliezer, in order to make a minion, or that's a discussion exactly what was the mitzvah the Rabbim, but the, the Gemara calls it a mitzvah the Rabbim, it's a discussion what mitzvah are we talking about. But that's also not for now. But the Gemara states, uh, how could he go ahead and free a slave? Well, all of tavodu is an iser ase to free a slave. The Gemara says mitzvah the rabim shani for a public mitzvah overrides it, like we have by Noah Velas on Yantif, because the Gemara tells us the mitzvah the rabim of Simcha overrides the private mitzvah of Avelis. So we find the concept of mitzvah the rabim in many places. So the Rishonim point out. Normally we say a person can't sin to, prov- to stop someone from doing a major sin, but on a mitzvah the rabbin, like Rabbi Elezer, Elezer, even though it's even a bigger kiddush because he violated an iserase, and he, um, in order to, in order that people to have a minion and show up to do a mitzvah, so, so too, so therefore we see that one is permitted to save someone on a mitzvah the rabbim, one is permitted. Others say not only a mitzvah the rabbim, but a mitzvah rabba, a great mitzvah. All mitzvahs are great. So what do you mean a great mitzvah? So the Gemara tells us in Gittin, that mem alof amid beis, that an owner, the master, is mutter, again, to free his evik kanani, his slave, that in general is prohibited because of all mehem tavodu. For the sake of a great mitzvah, what's the great mitzvah? 
a mitzvah to marry and have children, a mitzvah pru revu. You can free a slave in order that the slave can get married and have kids. Because I guess um, and pru revu which and the mitzvah of Shabbos are great mitzvahs because without that there wouldn't be a world. So if we see another example, we permit you to violate an Avera for the greater cause in order that do a mitzvah rabba. And another category they point out it depends on the, on on why the person is sitting. If the person is a, it's in and very or is go pashav, he wasn't that because he didn't know it just happened. Like the it wasn't his fault while he was doing it, so then you're able to stop it. Now, if the, then if someone did it unintentionally or well pasha inadvertently, so therefore one can violate a, a minor sin in order to do a um, say from a future sin, a more a greater sin. Those are the exceptions. So based on this, the Rashba discusses the cases where the person is permitted to violate Shabbos, let's say his daughter was taken by missionaries and they're concerned that they don't go drive after them or Machal Shabbos, call the police, whatever you have to do, you're never going to see your daughter again and therefore she's going to be in, she's going to worship and be in another religion. So the Rashba says, based on like the Mara, we see, Ain Adam, Ain Omul Adam, you can't tell a person desecrate the Shabbos to save the girl because you can't sin to save someone else from even a greater sin. However, the base Yosef, quoting from the Balitosis and others, they argue on the Rosh Panefa based on one of the principles we mentioned before, a mitzvah rabbah. It's a great mitzvah because you're saving, if you save the child now, they'll be able to fulfill a, uh, a life full of mitzvahs. But if, once they, if they go to another religion, their whole entire life will be forfeited and in terms of mitzvahs. And the Mishnah Brura wants to qualify, the Chafetz Chaim wants to qualify this rule. It depends if the girl, if the guy, whoever it is, goes on his own to embrace another religion, so then the father is not permitted to violate an Issa Minat Torah, maybe an Issa Drabanan. They can't violate an Issa Daraisa to try to get her back because he bases on the fact where Tosa says about one of the one of the exceptions is go pasha. It, it was negligent, it was unintentional, but if one decides to reject Judaism intentionally, so therefore his friend may not even transgress a Islam in Torah to save him. So perhaps um, that touches on the issue today, even maybe in that case, though we consider they know what they're doing, maybe everyone's a teen of Shanishpa, and there are people who voluntarily go in so they don't really know and therefore they won't be considered a pasha. That, you know, that touches on a general issue how we view non-observant Jews who are out of the fold, whether um, how do we, whether they're a tinok, literally a tinok shanish, is a child who was taken captive while he was a kid and barely knows he's Jewish. So many people today, no fault of their own, are brought up in secular environments, don't even know they're Jewish, or barely, or even if they know they're Jewish, they don't know what Judaism means. Therefore, uh, therefore, one could argue that today, even maybe that would be considered a mitzvah rabba, even saving people who um, who are volunteers. That's a discussion. It's all based on the principle of it starts with the first premise: Kol Yisrael Revim Zelazeh. All Jews are responsible for one another, and even though it's a general rule. It doesn't, we don't say you should do a minor sin to save someone from a major sin. But as we see, there are exceptions to the rule. And sometimes it goes so far that we even permit it to sin ourselves to save other people from greater harm. And either because of mitzvah the rabbim, a mitzvah rabbim, lo pasha. But the point being is, that's how far the mitzvah of loving another Jew and and being responsible. Those are extreme cases where you have to do an Avera sometimes, but most, fortunately, most times we don't have to do. It's not an issue of performing an Avera. It's an issue of just going ahead and caring and doing something, and then according to everyone, Ka Yisrael, 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 Ka Yis
making kiddush for everyone, blowing the shofar, one has an obligation to ensure that every Jew fulfills as many mitzvahs as possible.